Right? There's one right there. Of course, this isn't a Catholic church, and so there's the Vatican flag. But there's a gold fringe flag flying in a church. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what your denomination is. If it's a mainline Protestant denomination, Catholics or uh, uh, the Orthodox, they all have gold fringe flags. Okay, well, what does that mean exactly? Well, as it turns out, hey, there's an army regulation on flags. And, uh, you know, so it's uh, Army Regulation uh, AR, so AR 840-10, right? Flags got on streamers, tabards, and so forth and so on. And it's, you know, all quite interesting, but if you go to Chapter 2, to start there, right? Flag of the United States. So uh, what you'll find out by reading this is, you know, when you see the flag of the United States, like, on a uh, flagpole outside. If that building isn't a school, then it's somehow connected to the military because there's very few places that a flag of the United States can be displayed publicly. Privately, they, you can hang it on your house, you can do whatever you want. But publicly, for a public entity to display a gold fringe flag takes a certain... Um, uh, license to do. All right? So in this chapter two, uh, flags of the United States, it gives all these different sizes, the flags of the United States. All right? And we go down far enough, national flag listed below are for indoor display and for use in ceremonies and parades. All right? Uh, for this purpose, the flag of the United States will be of uh, rayon banner cloth trimmed on three sides of gold and yellow fringe. And then it goes on to say where it's authorized to be displayed. And if you were to read these, you would say, well, these all have something to do with the military. Like a military courtroom. Right? Well, one of the places it has something to do with is a chapel. And, uh, you know, so now the question is, well, how did, the arm, how did the church ever get a gold fringe flag from the military? How did they ever get, you know, enlisted into the army, to the uh, armed forces. Well, they didn't, unless they got a commission. And I've shown this in a number of videos before. And I'm going to want to show just a few pieces of it today. But in this uh, little handbook here called the Handbook of the National Catholic War Council, which you can download online, and I suggest you do, even if you're not a Catholic pastor. The Catholics wrote a very good handbook on why you have this authority. Now, the uh, Protestant churches have their own uh, entity, and I'm going to show you that in a second, but they were all given. Um, so what happened was in 1917, after Congress declared war, uh, Wilson issued a proclamation, and then the churches answered. And what they did is the, the churches created these civil organizations. So it's really not the church. It's a civil organization created by the church. And that organization was given a military uh, commission from the War Department. It didn't come from Congress. Right? This commission came from the War Department, and so that commission still exists because uh, World War I never ended. They acted like they were going to end it. They started doing a peace treaty, but it was never ratified. It's like everything else. It's not completely done. Um, just the same as uh, the Civil War isn't done. There was only ever an armistice, which is not a peace treaty. And... Uh, Lincoln declared martial law in 1863, September 15, 1863, over all the United States, and it's never been rescinded. And according to the Libra Code, which was also published in 1863, which is the governance of the armies of the United States in the field, it says in the second article that once martial law has been declared, it doesn't end until there's a proclamation or a peace treaty. Well, those things didn't happen, and so the military is still in charge, and the 
the United States is under martial law, military form of government. Now, that isn't what we see that calls itself the Congress and uh, uh, the, your governor and all these other things. That What we see that we are told is the government is a democracy. And that democracy is the United States of America, which is not the United States. In the United States, you're supposed to have a Republican form of government. There's nothing in the there's nothing in the Constitution whatsoever about a democracy. But a democracy is what King George III's successors' jurisdiction is, which is the United States of America, which is just a private society in the United States. But it's not the United States, and we've been shanghaied into this private jurisdiction uh, by esquires through acts of bad faith and the way to get out of it is for the rulers under Romans chapter 13 to go to the judges of these uh, King George's jurisdiction and tell them they have to stop. Well, that's well. Sounds easy enough. Just need somebody to do it. Well, thankfully, because I was helping somebody in jail whose sister's on the outside trying to help him, and she uh, has a good relationship with her pastor at church, her pastor's agreed to fill out a Army sworn statement form. So before we look at the handbook, let's look at that sworn statement form. I mean, this is, a, this is an example of um, a positive thing that can be done by a pastor. And I've shown this form numerous times on the videos, right? It's called the sworn statement form. It shows these routine uses, what it could be used for. Uh, disclosed to federal, state, local, foreign government, law enforcement agencies, prosecutors, courts, child protective services, victims, witnesses, Department of Veterans Affairs, Office of Personnel Management. All these things are different government agencies, right? And... Um, because this is a form in a military jurisdiction, when you get to the end where the affidavit is, first you have your statement, and now you're going to swear to your statement. So you're not submitting an affidavit. You're submitting a sworn statement that has an affidavit. But when you know you go to court today, they try to make it sound like you're submitting an affidavit. And by definition, an affidavit is an oath rendered to writing. And uh, an oath can't be challenged. But evidence can, and we're trying to put evidence in, right? So a sworn statement is evidence. In fact, because it's done this way with two witnesses and the person administering the oath, this would become um, foolproof evidence, also known as self-authenticating evidence, and it needs nothing else to prove that it is what it says it is by the rules of evidence, right? So it's more than just uh, having a notary signature on your document. Now, the reason you can't use a notary in this case, in my opinion, is a notary doesn't have any jurisdiction or any authority in a military jurisdiction. But a preacher does, because you got a gold fringe flag. All right, so the person making the statement is going to sign here, the preacher is going to sign here, we're going to have two witnesses, and now you can submit this form to any of the places that were listed up here, and it will be seen as evidence Foolproof evidence uh, coming from the military jurisdiction, from the gold fringe flag jurisdiction. Well, guess what's in courtrooms? Gold fringe flags. You know where else there's court, uh, gold fringe flags? The county building's got one. Your uh, township supervisor has one. Um, the American Legion has one. All sorts of places have them, but they're not using them. Right, because you have to be um, somehow tied to the entity that has the gold fringe flag because they're acting as your agent. And that's really what this book would tell you about right here is that uh, the whole reason that the military did this is they turned these uh, church civil organizations into cooperating agents between the people of the parish or the church or the congregation 
and the other wartime agencies, which is anybody that has a gold fringe flag. Right? They didn't tell you this. We've been at, you know, we've been under martial law since 1863. You're just going to have to get over it. But because of that, well, what does that mean today? Well, what it means is, you know, we're, we're just going to the wrong people to try to get relief. We should be going to the rulers to go talk to the judges about why we're in court or whatever the other reasons are. So hang on just a second. 